This is a quick video on our integrated shelter belt and food forest design. Um, this is the section that's probably most complete, uh, most fully planted up, so this is the bit I'm filming today. Um, that's south over there, and our border runs along there and along there, so it's a big diamond pointed south. So this is the northwestern um, side. So at the back we've got, in fact let's go around and show you. We've got a double row on a like a planted on a diamond pattern of Italian alder. An Italian alder, see I mean these are two years old and some of them are coming up to five foot now. Uh, you can see the spreads coming out quite nicely. Um, yeah they're gonna a couple of years and they'll start really making a difference and that's basically the outer skin of the shelter belt. Now they're full height trees they're gonna go very high indeed. Uh, it's a nitrogen fixing uh, tree so it'll supply all the nitrogen necessary for the rest of this system. You can see it's still quite narrow uh, so more than enough for that. Um, underneath this in the next couple of years will go a strip of um, uh, ebbing silverberry, uh, Eliagnus ebbingi and that is uh, again a nitrogen fixer uh, I think using the same um, type of bacteria but not that that matters uh, and that's an evergreen species that will go up to about three meters has a fruit um, that's edible but is incredibly wind fast and of course being evergreen never drops its leaves so that will give us a core down here of uh, that will pretty much fill this space with the Italian alder as an overstory so in summer we'll get massive amount of protection but we'll get really good solid protection lower down even through winter now that is that bit so basically everything to the right of the footpath is the Italian alder we will over time I mean there are already the odd tree coming through I think hmm cherry plum maybe it's a prunus anyway um, but on this side so basically on the the what the south eastern side of the uh, of the track there as an outer skin wrapped around we've got this red osier willow and they're about every eight inches all the way around and pretty much up to the barn uh, which isn't ours so it's everything short of that that's ours um, so these posts we had to take them out to take the pods up the field but these are the posts that are going to get hammered back in. It's not like a stock fence, it's nothing robust. And that's going to be at waist height. And that's going to follow that pattern all the way around. And that's going to have a single strand of wire, which is what this is, old recycled wire that we've dragged out of the bushes. Um, it's going to have a single strand. It doesn't have to be taut even, it's just there to make a form. It's going to go from that post and follow it all the way around. So that as the willow comes up, we can wrap it around that cable uh, sorry that wire and go around and basically twist it so that it'll fuse together and create a single cable of uh, willow that follows the track all the way around and of course will fill in lower down and the idea to that as well as being a nice fence is we can come through uh, in the autumn and we can cut all of the osiers above that down and that'll give us either a load of cuttings if we leave it till the spring or as i say we can cut it in the autumn and that'll give us a fuel source for the rocket mass heater um, now inside, like between the track and the willow, we've got all sorts of things. Here, let's step over. That's a Morello cherry. I think there's three or four of these coming through. Um, which, although they're the biggest trees at the moment, will eventually be an understory. That's a small leaved lime. Let's go and have a look actually. Yeah, that's a small leaved lime. That's done quite well and that's got an edible leaf that's like a, a bulk salad ingredient that's quite tasty We've got currant bushes everywhere uh, we haven't been too fussy we just shoved them in everywhere because it's just pushing sticks in the ground uh, there's another one there's another small leaf lime here and the idea being that with the big wall of complete cover behind us the whole i mean the whole crop really is a series of uh, sun traps pointing south to pick up sun in winter and that'll happen here because the sun angle is basically from 
where are we from over there to about there in winter so this will get a certain amount of solar gain so it'll just create a nicer microclimate um but yeah the willow let's say will get cut at waist height every year anyway got the big wall behind that so in amongst this we've got other species like this that we can keep bottle out there to about chest height so we can use them for bulk leaf production when we want to we've got current we've got just some generic pine uh, i think this is a scots pine uh, that we put in just to give us a bit of cover in the meantime like a nurse crop until the system's bigger and we'll probably leave them in for a good while it's just i like pine trees we've got another current and these are mostly black current um, and then we've got other things like there's a crab apple that's just coming out uh, uh, here's one that's an older tree that's about four or five years old that's a uh, black carrot I think that one I think all the ones in, are the older ones here there's another pine tree um, what have we got here ah no that's a cherry plum you can see it virtually died back to the roots a couple of years ago when something had a chew on it well about a year ago but that's come back lower down so that'll do well this year um, alongside the path We've got hazels, um, and each one of these will have about a metre or so away from it. So between that hazel and that hazel, there'll be somewhere around here, there'll be a chestnut going in to create a big, the, you know, the overstory canopy. Um, yeah, look at that. There's a morello. It's coming out into flower. Lovely. So these are we've had for about 18 months, but they only went into the ground about a month or so ago. Um, so yeah, we got a few Morello um, because they fruit well even in shade, or fruit reasonably well even in shade. Um, what else have we got? That's a Rowan. That's doing nicely. Um, <laughs> that, <laughs> that's amazing. That's an elder trunk that's just been shoved on the ground. <laughs> look at that it's rooted through probably by now but it's throwing up all these shoots all across this massive so that's going to be quite a big tree if it all takes yeah and there's that wind from behind me that that shelter is going to take out uh see so we've got currants another pine um we got um all sorts of flowering uh, stuff as another story as well. Um, so you can see the willow here. You see it better. That's been mulched with the uh, wood chip that's been underneath the uh, chickens all winter. So we just barred that up as a one-off thing. We won't do this every year. Um, and I'm going to top dress that with manure throughout the year now and really get it shooting up because uh, yeah that should put on about a meter this year as long as i give it enough manure and it gets enough of everything else it needs we'll try eh? uh we've got a gooseberry uh some budlier so there's all sorts in here just you know stuff for the um insects as well that i think might be a hazel hazel maybe uh, there's another current uh, a few of the italian older you can see are quite little and that's where we've had the odd failure uh, and we've had to replace them uh, but some of them are really getting quite big ah uh, sea buckthorn uh, we've got some really cool sea buckthorn seedlings but these are the older trees that have gone in uh, but the seedlings we're going to put onto one of the swales probably that top swale there will have some sea buckthorn on it uh, there's another sea buckthorn and they're doing quite well um, you can see how unhappy the rushes are because this area is a lot drier than it was two years ago when we came here because so we put in earthworks to shunt all the water that comes off that barn sideways and it's completely drying out this section of land which is another good reason for using the Italian alder um, so them uh, southwestern winds that we get quite late in the year that will you know just batter any fruit production that we got out here I mean yeah you know, once they're big enough it's hard to imagine it when they're only like five foot high um, but yeah they'll keep their leaves later in the year and give us a, a huge amount of protection uh, but all alders will do that but the italian ones because uh, alders are very tolerant of waterlogged conditions but italian alder is also very tolerant of drought so in a year like we had two years ago 
they actually thrived when we were having a bucket water around the fields and all sorts because we didn't have hose pipes and stuff. Um, so yeah, they're perfect for a setting like this with land as it goes through transition from very wet land to somewhat drier land. Um, they've been absolutely superb. Uh, I'll tell it. Uh, yeah, what else have we got? I think that is a bird cherry. We've got a few of them about. Um, I think that's another crab apple. Uh, and they're in mostly as like a universal pollinator for the other apple varieties that are in. Because, um, you know, they're not clones, they're seedling trees. And we've got more uh, seedling apples coming along as well. Um, what else have we got? I mean, you can see there's stuff everywhere. Currants, I think that's a cherry plum. Um, another crab, I think. Another pine. And then at the end here, you can see they're just starting to come now where the red willow comes through and ends. We've got these willows that have uh, just starting to flower out. Uh, sorry, just starting to leave out. And it's the same the other side. There's a few of them here. And that's an osier type. So we're going to reinforce them with more. And as they grow bigger, they're going to be woven into an arch. And we'll have one at the bottom end as well. Down near the car park with the van is. Um, so it's going to be a nice little uh, shelter belt. Um, gives us food. Gives us um, wildlife habitat. Uh, gives us plenty of stick fuel for the rocket mass system. And also looks nice. Um, yeah. Oh, and one more bit. Let's have a look. So that's a Morello, but no, yeah, it still feels life. I think that'll come yet. Yeah. But that's the most recent one we've planted. Yeah, we have buds. There we go. It's just a little bit of stress, probably. Uh, so you can see how unwell the rushes are. But uh, I'm going to do a video on the earthwork systems at some point, but just a quick one. We don't own this barn, but we do get the water off it. You can see all the downpipes and the way all the roof runs. Everything to that side of that ridge, we get the water from down here so this swale is a fairly short one it only runs from the fence line there around to the track there and then uh, <laughs> there's a pipe just about see it maybe in the corner there and that runs underneath and gets picked up by that swale now the bottom of this swale here at the bottom you know right in the bottom of the ditch is four inches higher than the bottom of that swale so in normal conditions, when I've got the swale in winter, for example, I've got the swale set to fully drain. Uh, I've done a video about that. I'll link to it um, uh, in the, uh, down below, you know. Um, I can set it to fully drain and all this water gets taken away. But in summer, if we've got a dry spell and I want to hang on to every single drop, um, I can set it at the far end there to full infiltration. And as the water comes in, it'll all stay in that swale and then very quickly back floods up and fills this one as well so by one pipe monk at the other end of that swale i can adjust the water height or the infiltration rate for the whole swale so if i want to like at the moment when it's quite dry um, that's set to fully infiltrate so we've got rain dew over the next couple of days and it'll keep all the water right here where we want it but in winter i can set it the other way and go so that's how we're draining this land without committing to having to have it, you know, as dry as possible in all weathers, like you would with uh, conventional um, drainage ditches and so on. So yeah, that is this little section of shelter belt slash food forest slash, uh, well, permaculture system, let's face it. <laughs> no permaculture um, element does only one thing. Oh, and pretty much, well, we got, we got currants because we've been stuck them everywhere oh, yeah, actually there's loads i can see them uh but this is ebbings um which again uh these are the first ones that we put in really and they're really coming on um and they'll come up to a couple of meters high and wide so that from that direction these spacings here will give uh, extra protection um along the back of the boom as well as the uh, Italian order behind me and so on this will be <laughs> here extra reinforcements this little strip here 
then becomes a really special protected little uh, microclimate that we haven't planted anything to yet apart from one cornelian cherry so yeah it's pretty diverse already uh that's our shield above